In this video, we're going to use the forward diff automatic differentiation package in Julia in order to implement an efficient Jacobian vector product. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video on automatic differentiation in Julia. Here I already have a function f defined, which is a vector valued function taking a four-dimensional input x and mapping it to a three-dimensional output u. So let us create a vector of example values. Let's call that the evaluation point at which we want to query that function. And let's just have an arbitrary collection of numbers. Let's say 1.0, 0 0.5, 1.5, and 2.0. And that's, of course, four entries in a vector. And then if we call f on this evaluation point, we are getting out a three-dimensional vector. Now we are interested in derivative information of this function f. And for this, we will be using forwarddiff.jl. So let's import it by saying using forwarddiff. And then forwarddiff has a lot of functionality. Let's quickly take a look at it by saying forwarddiff and then put a dot and then use the tab autocompletion. And here we see a couple of derivative options. So we have a gradient, we have a Hessian, then we also have a Jacobian, and then we also have something that's called a derivative. And of course, many other functions, but probably these are the more interesting high level operations here. So let's use the Jacobian function in order to obtain the Jacobian matrix of our vector valued function, which is the collection of the partial derivatives. So I will clear the screen here, and then let's call this the full Jacobian and say forward diff dot Jacobian on the function f. And then we have to provide the evaluation point. So let's hand that over. This is going to be the point at which the Jacobian is evaluated. And then this runs for a bit. And here we now get our three by four dimensional Jacobian. And we of course expect it to be three by four dimensional since we are working in the numerator layout, meaning that we add the dimensionality of the input to the right. So we are getting the four dimensions in the columns due to the four dimensional input to our function. However, for the video, technically we're not interested in the full Jacobian, but rather a Jacobian vector product. So a Jacobian vector product. So what is that? That is basically the product of the Jacobian. We could technically also write as df by dx matrix multiplied with a vector v from the right. So we're taking the three by four dimensional matrix and multiplying it with a four dimensional vector. So let's create an arbitrary multiplication point for this vector v. And again, this has to be four dimensional. So let's take 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8 and then basically the jvp result is by saying full jacobian matrix multiplied with the multiplication point and here we go that's of course a three-dimensional vector with a couple of entries and what we've been doing now is kind of the way a jacobian vector product works conceptually although what we're doing here is not the most efficient way of obtaining it and that is because we are first allocating a full jacobian often however we are not interested in the jacobian but just in the result of the jacobian vector product and therefore we can use a trick in order to implement an efficient jacobian vector product so we will now be using a function from the forward diff dot jl package to implement an efficient jacobian vector product also shortcut jvp so for this let me clear the screen and i will create a function i want to call jvp a jacobian vector product is defined based on a function as well as a primal information and a tangent information primal and tangent these are just terms from differentiable geometry in more pragmatic terms primal is the evaluation point and tangent is the multiplication point so the point at which we want to evaluate the jacobian as well as the point at which we want to multiply it with so what does this jvp do and in contrast to the naive approach we've done so far we are not allocating the full jacobian and the idea is quite interesting in that we create a helper function let's call it g of t which is given as the function evaluated at the primal plus t times the tangent so this function g shall be parameterized by t and shall then evaluate the vector valued function at the primal plus t times the tangent and we assume t to be a scalar 
So that is an easy operation. So we take the primal point plus t times the tangent. Basically, that's just vector arithmetics here. So we are going from the primal location into the tangent direction and we do it t times. So if we have t equals zero, we are just at the primal. And if we have t equals one, then we add primal plus tangent and so on and so forth. And now that function g is a mapping from a scalar, so a one dimensional vector, you could say, to a three dimensional vector to the output of the function. And now we can call a specific operation in the forward diff package in order to obtain the derivative information of that g. And this derivative information will turn out to be the JVP result. So let's do JVP result is equal to forward diff dot derivative on the G function evaluated at zero. And we evaluate it at zero because we want to have the derivative information at the primal. Then we can return that JVP result and end the function. And let's again recall the naive JVP, which was the full Jacobian matrix multiplied with the multiplication point. And the JVP shall now take F evaluation point and multiplication point and it produces an approximately same result apart from some rounding errors and that's really interesting so now we have a function which performs an arguably more efficient jvp in contrast to this naive one let's benchmark the two to see that this one is in the particular case we're looking at at least slightly better for this we create a function and call it the naive jvp which also takes the same signature so it takes a function as well as a primal and a tangent but instead of creating this helper function we will allocate the full jacobian by saying forward this dot jacobian of the function evaluated at the primal and then we obtain the jvp result by saying jacobian matrix multiplied with the tangent and then we return the jvp result and end the function let's also quickly check if the implementation is correct by calling it on the evaluation point and the multiplication point and here we see again we're getting similar values now let's import the benchmark tools package from julia in order to benchmark the two functions by saying add benchmark using the benchmark macro for the clever jvp first with f evaluation point and multiplication point then let that run and here we go we get a lot of information i think more interestingly at the moment is just to look at the mean time which is around 940 nanoseconds. Let's do the same thing for the naive JVP. So I'm just like swapping the names here and let that run as well. And here we get another run. And here we have a time of 1.8 microseconds. So it's about one microsecond slower than the efficient JVP. Of course, you could now argue, well, that's just a factor of two. That's really negligible and probably that's true. But that's caused by the fact that F is just a small vector valued function. So just mapping from four dimensional vector space to three dimensional vector space. If you have larger functions that, for instance, map from 100,000 dimension to 500,000 dimension, you will clearly see that the JVP implementation the clever one will be way superior and that's also often caused by the fact that the Jacobians to large vector valued function especially in physics and computational science are sparse meaning that these Jacobians that are created in the naive JVP have a sparsity structure and contain a lot of zeros and computing these zeros and also multiplying them later on is highly inefficient and at a certain point for a certain size it becomes even infeasible or intractable to do on modern day computers. And that's also the point where you really have to rely on Jacobian vector products. And if you then do the benchmark, you will see significant differences between the two approaches. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is way more content on automatic differentiation, adjoint methods in Julia and also in JAX and other Python frameworks. And I'm pretty sure you will find something interesting here. Here you will now see a similar video as well as a playlist. And I hope to see you in one of the next videos.